We all know that high-level bossing is the best moneymaker in old school, but there's a number of skilling methods out there that earn you millions per hour. Today, I'm counting down the top five most profitable skilling methods. These don't depend too much on the grand exchange prices, so these methods won't crash and will consistently give you millions per hour. Let's get into it. After completing Dragon Slayer 2 and with 95 rune crafting, you can make Wrath runes. Since the release of the Guardians of the Rift minigame, runecrafting moneymakers have almost doubled their hourly profit. The Raiments of the Eye set, which is the runecrafting outfit, gives you 60% more runes per essence, which is pretty much 60% more GP per hour. The Colossal Pouch from the minigame has sped up trips since you only have to use one pouch, and it's increased the amount of essence that you can carry. Wrath Rune Crafting earns you up to 2.7 mil per hour with both a Colossal Pouch and the Rune Crafting Outfit. Without the outfit, your profit is almost halved. And also with the Rune Crafting Skill Cape, which removes the need to repair your pouches, your profit can reach almost 3 mil an hour with good clicks. When you're making Wrath Runes, you need protection from Dragon Fire since you'll be running past a number of dragons. So you'll need an Anti-Dragon Shield, a Dragon Fire Shield, or a Dragon Fire Ward. I like to take a Zamorakian Hasta with me as well, since it provides the best defensive stats for a one-handed weapon. In terms of teleports, you'll need a mythical cape to get to the altar, and you'll also need a teleport to a bank. I'd usually have the crafting skill cape teleport, but since it takes up an extra inventory slot, you should just take rings of dueling. You're also going to need a Wrath Tiara, which are fairly cheap on the Grand Exchange. So this is how the runs work. Starting at the bank, you fill up your runecrafting pouches, and I suggest installing the runecrafting utilities runelight plugin. And this allows you to have the fill option as your left click. Once full, you teleport to the myths guild and enter the dungeon through the mythic statue. Once you're in, you run south, and in this area, there's a number of different dragons. So when you're running past, flick protect from melee on. Continuing south, you'll come across a dungeon exit, and this takes you to the ruins of the Wrath Altar. Click on the ruins to enter, and then craft your Wrath Runes. And once you've emptied out your pouches, you teleport back to Castle Wars or your bank and repeat. Overall, you'll earn almost 3 mil an hour with all of the items and high efficiency. But there are better runecrafting moneymakers out there that I'll show later in this video. Before I get on to number 4, I have an honourable mention, and that is Mech Arena, today's video sponsor. Mech Arena is a mobile third-person shooter with competitive gameplay, offering 5v5 team PvP. It's free-to-play and fast-paced, with matches taking 5 minutes or less. There's heaps of pilots to choose from, adding a whole new depth of strategy to the game. My favourite pilot has to be Faye. She has long-ranged rockets, allowing you to shoot past obstacles and walls, and and she also has splash damage, which is useful on the very small maps. In Mech Arena, you're able to customize your pilot's skills to fit your playstyle, allowing you to specialize with certain weapons. Mech Arena also has a ton happening this month. There's a new mech called Orion. There's also Season 8 of the Battle Pass, where you can get new skins and a range of other rewards. There's also special events where you can win the new Graviton Beam, which looks insanely powerful. So get started on Mech Mech Arena today, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to download it for free. Using my link, you get a free starter pack worth $25 to kickstart your experience. If you're fast, you can add me as a friend and I'll be partying up with a few people. My username is Theoatrix and my user ID is on the screen. Thanks to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. The fourth best skilling moneymaker in the game is pickpocketing Vyas in Darkmire. This requires completion of the Sins of the Father quest, as well as at least 82 thieving. Every time you thieve from a Vyar, you have a 1 in 5,000 chance of getting a Blood Shard, which is close to 10 mil right now. With the Rogue's outfit on, you get double loot, which means you'll get two Blood Shards instead of one if you get one as a drop. Vyars also give a number of runes and coins, which do add up over time. At 82 thieving when you unlock them, you average 2.1 mil per hour, plus 160k thieving XP an hour. At 99 thieving, your profit exceeds 3 mil an hour, and on average, you'll get 220k thieving. These hourly rates all assume that you have the following completion 
edition of the Hard Arty Diary for the 10% increased thieving chance, the full rogues outfit to receive double loot, dodgy necklaces for the 25% chance of preventing stun, the Shadow Veil Arceus spell, which gives a 15% chance to prevent stun and damage, which stacks with dodgy necklaces, and the 3 mil an hour at 99 assumes you're wearing the thieving skill cape, which gives an additional 10% chance of being successful. When you're pickpocketing, I recommend going to the Via in this house, southeast of the Sepulchre entry. In this house, you don't need to wear Via Noble clothing, since there's no Via Watch nearby to attack you. There's also a wine spawn on the table that you can use to heal. In terms of food, I suggest using Zamorakian Brews and Redemption. Each sip of brew replenishes 10% of your prayer points, which is less than a prayer potion, but they're much cheaper, only 1.1k per dose. Overall, the success rate of thieving vias is pretty low, hovering around the 50% mark depending on your level. So you will get stunned pretty often here, and you'll also need a lot of food. When banking, I suggest going to the Sepulcher Bank, since it is closer than the Darkmire one. As you go, you're also going to get a number of rubies and diamonds, and I would suggest dropping them unless you have room or you're about to bank. So vias can net you 2-3 to three mil per hour depending on your level a great moneymaker where you'll get a lot of thieving XP as well. The third best skilling moneymaker is one I just mentioned, and that is completing the Hallowed Sepulchre. The Sepulchre is a long agility course with moving obstacles and projectiles. It gives the best agility XP in the game, although requires a lot more focus and practice than regular courses. To partake, the Sepulchre requires the Sins of the Father quest and at least 52 agility, although if you want to make good money here, you're going to need at least 82 agility. At 82, you can expect to earn close to 2 mil an hour here, and with 92, which unlocks floor 5, you'll profit over 3 mil an hour. There's a number of required items to complete the Sepulchre, along with certain strategies, and I won't go through all of them in this video, but I'll point out the very important things. Ground markers or tile indicators make the Sepulchre a lot easier, and without them you're guaranteed to mess up at least a few times per run. In the description, I've linked a paste bin that includes the coordinates of every tile marker that you should have within the Sepulchre. With the Ground Markers plugin active on Runelight, you can right-click your world map and select Import Ground Markers. So what you do is you copy the markers for each floor from the paste bin, and then you right-click and press Import, and it uses the data that you copied and creates tile markers. These markers are extremely helpful, but you do still need to focus quite a bit, since there's a lot of cases where there's multiple tiles marked and you need to watch out for projectiles to see where to stand. You should always have the True Tile Indicator plugin active on Runelight as well, and this shows you where your character is actually standing. If you're interested in learning the Sepulchre, I've linked a guide down in the description. It's a great way to earn money at high agility levels, and gives the best agility XP per hour while you earn. At level 77 runecrafting, and once again with completion of the Sins of the Father quest, you can runecraft blood runes. At maximum, you can earn over 3.2 mil per hour here, but this assumes you have high agility and all of the items. With 93 agility, there's a shortcut that you can take that will almost double your runecrafting rate. It saves you running all the way around this cave. With lower agility levels, there's other shortcuts that you can take, but they don't save anywhere near as much much time, eating away at your hourly profit. All of these GP per hour rates assume that you're using Blood Essence, which costs 200k on the Grand Exchange, and when you activate it, it has a 50% chance of crafting an extra Blood Rune, with a total of 1000 charges. While it does cost 200k, it's completely worth it to use, it boosts your hourly profit by around 400k. At Blood Runes, the Raiments of the Eye set gives you an extra 1 mil per Per hour GP boost, so it's highly recommended to get that outfit. You're also going to need a blood tiara while you're training, unless you have the runecrafting skill cape which acts as all tiaras. Blood tiaras are a little expensive, and not many are sold on the Grand Exchange, so if you can't get your hands on one, you can make your own with a blood talisman if you need to. With blood runecrafting, you'll need a teleport close to a fairy ring, so that could be the quest cape, slayer rings, or a teleport to your house. You'll also need a teleport back to the bank, and I'm using Rings of Dueling to save an inventory space since I'm wearing the runecrafting skill cape again. 
So this is a run of blood rune crafting. Starting at the bank, you fill your pouches and inventory, and you make sure that you have your blood essence activated in your inventory. You then teleport to a fairy ring, so I'm teleporting to my house. You use the fairy ring code DLS, and that takes you to the Myracure hideout. From here, you take the southern cave entry, and then run a little bit north to another cave entry. You then follow this cave south to the southernmost one, and this requires 93 agility to enter. And also, if it's your first time using it, you have to run around and clear the blockage at the end of the shortcut. So once you go there, you go through the wall to the east, and in this room is the blood ruins. You then enter the blood altar and craft your blood runes, ensuring that the blood essence is active. So overall, the runs are a little longer than Wrath Rune crafting. But with blood essence and the high price of blood runes, you're going to make a fair bit more GP per hour here compared to Wraths. At level 85 thieving, and with completion of Song of the Elves, you can pickpocket elves for huge hourly profits. Assuming that you have the hard arty diary, rogues outfit, shadow veil, and dodgy necklaces, you can earn 2.5 mil per hour here at 85 thieving, and at 99, you'll average 3.4 mil per hour, while getting 160k thieving XP an hour. Although, it is possible to average 3.8 mil per hour at maximum efficiency. Stealing from elves, there's a 1 in 1024 chance of getting an enhanced crystal teleport seed, which is worth over 3 mil. With the full rogues outfit, you get 2 of these, so if you get the drop, you get 6 mil from one pickpocket. On average, each pickpocket is worth 7.8k, or 3.9k if you're not wearing the rogues outfit. You'll also get a bunch of coins, death runes, and nature runes that you can stack up as you go. And also, you'll get a number of crystal shards, and these shards contribute a lot to your GP per hour, since if you crush them and create divine combat potions, each shard is worth a little bit under 20k. When thieving, I suggest going to this house, to the east of the Priftinus Bank bank, since you can trap an elf easily in there, and you also have easy access to the bank for food. For healing, I suggest using Zamorak Bruise and Redemption again, if you have a high hit points level. I'll usually bring 10 dodgy necklaces and 10 Zami Bruise per trip, and once again, you are going to fail a lot of pickpockets, like Vyas. The success rate floats between 30% and 40%, depending on your level, so that's a lot of failing. Overall though, Thieving Elves is the best consistent skilling moneymaker in old school and also gives decent thieving XP per hour while you're doing it. Before I finish this video, I want to talk about Cremating Shades, which is another big moneymaker but not quite good enough for the top 5. With Tick Manipulation, it's possible to earn over 2 mil per hour with Urium Remains, and you also get 240k Fire Making and 60k Prayer XP per hour. Cremating these requires 95 Fire Making and completion of the Shades of Morton quest. By tick manipulating the lighting of the shades, you can speed up the process by about 20%. These remains will commonly give you golden keys that you can use to open gold chests within the catacombs. These chests give a range of high value alcaballs along with a very high chance of getting an elite clue. It's actually the fastest way to get elite clues in the game aside from opening implings. On average, for every remain that you cremate, you'll profit 6k, so with tick manipulation, you can cremate up to 400 per hour, netting you over 2 mil an hour. If you guys want a more in-depth explanation, I'm going to link a video down in the description. So that's it for today's video. We had Wrath Runecrafting at number 5, then Pickpocketing Vyas, the Hallowed Sepulchre, Runecrafting Blood Runes, and at number 1 was Pickpocketing Elves. All of these have pretty high requirements, so I'm curious, what's your favourite skilling moneymaker? It doesn't have to be on this list, but I'm interested in what you guys like doing. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want more old school content, subscribe for weekly uploads. Be sure to download Mech Arena, and a big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching.